Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to send SMS text messages from Microsoft Access. Today's question comes from Cameron in Olympia, Washington, one of my gold members. Cameron says, I run a service business. I'd like the ability to be able to send SMS text messages to my customers to remind them of an upcoming appointment or to let them know that their technician is on the way. So many people don't check email regularly, but everyone carries their cell phones nowadays. Can this be done from my Access database? Well, yes, Cameron, there are a couple of different ways you can do this. In this video, I'm gonna show you one of them. Now, there are a few prerequisites before you watch today's video. First, go watch my send email video. We're gonna be sending SMS through an email gateway. So you need to know how to send email from your Access database using Microsoft Outlook. If you've never done any VBA programming before, go watch my Intro to VBA class. These are all free videos. They're on my website. They're on my YouTube channel. Go watch them. You'll also need to know how to do a relational combo box. That's where you have a combo box that you select a value from a different table. So go on. Go watch these right now. Go. Get out of here. Come back when you're done. Okay, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to send SMS text messages using an email to SMS gateway. That's where you send an email from your Access database, specially formatted to the user's cell phone using a gateway address. And we'll talk about what that is in just a minute. The other way is to use an API service like Twilio. There are a bunch of them. That's the one that I use. Now, the benefit of an email to SMS gateway is that it's free. All you have to do is format an email a certain way and it goes out. That's it. However, you have to know the carrier. In other words, you have to know what their cell phone provider is. You have to know whether it's Verizon or T-Mobile or Sprint or AT&T or whoever. All right, so you'll have to ask your end user, your customer, who's ever getting the text message, you'll have to ask them who their cell phone carrier is. It's a little bit of a pain, but if you're only sending to a select group of people, it's a good enough solution. Of course, with this method, reliability is a little unknown. It's like sending any email. It could make it to its destination. It might not. You, you can never be sure with an email, right? Another benefit is this is an easy method to set up. All you have to know is how to format the email, and then it's just like sending any normal email. Now, the other option is an API service. That's where you have a service that you pay for. It's fee-based. They're usually pretty inexpensive. Like Twilio is less than a penny per text. I think it's three quarters of a cent per text. But if you're sending out 10,000 texts, it could add up. But if you're just doing something where you want, to, you, know, you want to send appointment confirmations or, hey, your technician's on the way, or like a food delivery service, like you know, your food has been delivered, that kind of stuff, it's, and it's not that expensive in the long run. Now, the benefit of an API service is you don't need the carrier info. You just get their cell number. It doesn't matter who their provider is. The API service handles routing it to the correct cell phone provider. It's a lot more reliable. You can get delivery statistics and all that information too, so you know your text messages are going out. However, it is a little more complex to set up, and I will be showing how to use the API service in the extended cut for the members. But first, for everybody else, we're going to learn how to do the email to SMS gateway. Now, with an email to SMS gateway, you get the user's cell phone number, and then you send it to an email address at whatever their cell phone provider's email suffix is. I use Verizon, for example, and mine is at vtex.com. All right, there's AT&T, Sprint, T-Mobile, and some of the other more popular ones here in the States. If you don't see it listed there, just Google it. I've seen several different sites that have thousands of different cell phone providers from every country on the planet, all right, just Google email to SMS gateway and look for yours. Okay, these are just the popular ones here in the United States. Okay, so let's get into the database. Here I am in my Tech Help free template. This is a free download off my website. You can go grab a copy if you want to. The first thing you need is a table containing your list of carriers. Now, I've already prepared that. I'm not going to retype it in. I'm just going to click and drag it from my other database and drop it in here. I'll show you what it is in just a second. Okay, there it is. Carrier T. Let's open that up. It's a real simple table with an auto number, the carrier name, and the email suffix, two text fields. Now, if you take a look at Verizon, for example, that's what I use, you put your cell phone number at vtex.com. So you take the 10-digit cell phone number, right, 716-555-1212, at vtex.com. So you have to ask the customer what their cell phone provider is so you can pick it. Yeah, it's a little inconvenient, but there's no way around it unless you use the API method. 
So now we need to store the carrier ID in the customer table. So let's go over here to the customer table, right click, design view. I'm gonna come down to the bottom and I'm gonna add in here carrier ID. And that'll be a number of type long integer. This is a relational database concept here. And if you, if you haven't done that, then go take my relational video and watch that. Okay, which I assume if you watch the email video, you've watched that one before too. An intro to VB, and you've watched that one. Okay, so <laughs> prerequisites on prerequisites. Okay, so let's close this. Save changes, yes. Let's go to the customer form, and now I'll put a place on here to store what their carrier is. We'll make a combo box right here. So we'll go form design, grab the combo box tool, which is right there, drop you down here. This is why I wanted you to watch the relational combo box video first. Get the values from another table or query, hit next. We're getting our values from the carrier T. Next, bring over all three of those. We're gonna want the email suffix in a minute. Next, sort it by carrier name. Next, this is what the box will look like when it's open, that's fine. All right, next, store that value in the carrier ID. Next, what label would you like, carrier? And then we're done. Now I'm gonna take this and put it down here in the bottom. And just for the purposes of class, let's move the phone number field down here too. Now, do you want to do a separate phone number, cell phone number, work phone number? Yeah, you can. I have a rule. It's called my rule of three. If you're going to do more than three of something, whether it's an address or a phone number or an email address, if you're going to do more than three, put it in a separate table. Okay? I'll allow it if you just want to have work phone cell in the customer table. That's okay. As long as you're sure you're never going to need to go above three. Okay? So. We got the phone, we got the carrier. All right, let's do a little format painting here because that's bothering me. There we go. Okay. Let's take a look at what we got. Let's go over to form view. There's that. Pick a carrier. All right, let's say this one's on Verizon. Go over here and pick singular. Are they still around? Let's pick Boost Mobile. Where are you at? Let's pick uh, Sprint, whatever. Okay. Now let's make a button to actually send them a text message. Okay. So grab a command button, drop it down here. We're going to cancel that wizard. There's nothing in the wizard about sending emails, right? So we're just going to have to do this ourselves. Send text message like that. Okay. Let's give the button a good name. Send text button. And then right click on it, build event. That'll bring up the code builder, as you know, if you took my intro to VBA class, right? Okay. Now, since you all watched the email video, I'm going to copy and paste in here the code from the email video. Okay, there it is. There's the code from the email class. I did a little modification to it. Uh, just yesterday, I did an updated video to that email video where I show how to do what's called late binding. So I changed some of these things around. Go watch that. It's pretty cool. I'll put a link down below. Basically, this, this prevents us from needing to have a reference to the Outlook library up under Tools References. All right, we just do what's called late binding. Go watch that video too, it's kind of neat. But anyways, the gist of the code is you declare an Outlook application object, a mail item object, then you set the properties of the mail item. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is change the body format. I don't want OL format HTML because text messages should be sent as plain text. So if I do a little Google action here, I can see that OL format plain is one. Two is HTML. One is plain. So let's change this to one. All right, that's OL format plain. We want plain text for our SMS messages. Now, instead of body or HTML body, we're going to use just body. Okay, now for body text, put whatever you want to send in here. Like this is a sample text message. Okay. Now their email address, the email address is going to be the phone at, and then their email gateway. So if we look back here, phone is a field. All right. Carrier ID, that's in, okay, it came in as combo 30. That's one of my pet peeves with the combo box wizard is it doesn't give you the option to name the box. So let's call this uh, carrier combo. Now, keep in mind, there are three columns inside the combo box. The first column is hidden. That's got the ID in it. Second column is the name of the company. And the third column is that suffix we want. So it's columns zero, one, and two. Okay, so it's carrier combo dot column two has that suffix that we need. So come back over here. 
Email address is going to be phone ampersand. That's concatenation. If you don't know how to use concatenation, I got a video on that too. I'll put a link down below. And it's going to be carrier combo dot column two, just like that. Okay. Now the subject, again, keep it short, right? Um, I'll call it uh, uh, sample text or whatever. Whatever you want to put there. Usually it'll go the subject and then a space and then the body. That's how it usually comes across in most text messages. Okay, so that's it. Let's save it. Come back out here. Close this down. Open it back up again. And ready? Here we go. Send text message. And there it is. Outlook opens up. There's your email address right there, right? Phone number at vtex.com because I picked Verizon. Subject. And then the body. And then you're ready to hit send. I'm not going to send it because I don't want to actually send this. Save changes. Nope. And that's it. That's how you do it. That's how you send text messages from your Access database. Now, if you're planning on sending a lot of these or you don't want to have to deal with getting the carrier from every one of your customers, it's kind of a pain. All right. The other option is using the SMS API gateway from a company like Twilio. And I'll show that in the extended cut. So if you want to learn more, if you want to learn how to send SMS text messages without having to use email, I cover that in the extended cut for members. I will show you how to set up a free account on Twilio. It doesn't cost you a dime. Even the paid subscriptions, it's less than a penny per text message. So it's actually pretty cheap. Um, we'll use an API call, which basically access will go out to the website and say, hey, send this text message for me. All right. No gateway information is needed. You don't have to ask them if they're with Verizon or T-Mobile or whoever. And that's all covered in the extended cut for members. Silver members and up get access to all my extended cut videos. Gold members can download these database templates. How do you become a member? Click the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different types of membership levels that are available. Silver members and up will get access to all of the extended cut tech help videos, live video and chat sessions, and more. Gold members get access to a download folder containing all the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus access to my full beginner courses and some of my expert courses. These are the full length courses found on my website and not just for access. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, ASP and lots more. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and feel free to post any comments that you have. I do read them all. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Click on the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of building databases with Access. It's over three hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. And if you like level one, level two is just $1. And it's also free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and you can send me your question there. Click here to watch my free access beginner level one course, more of my tech help videos, or to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching this video from accesslearningzone.com.